such a huge number of Muslims today that are educated. Maybe they're educated with a bachelor's, master's, maybe they're physicians, but they're middle class or upper middle class or upper class. You know what the assumption is in so many Muslim minds? That Islam is backwards. And it's not just Islam, they think religion itself is backwards. We're living in the modern time, in modern times. And as a result of modernity, we have to keep up with the times. And Islam is one of those things that is holding us back. Islam is not dealing with things that are happening right now. When we create practical Islamic education that deals with realities of our time, then we are able to display in the most intellectual fashion that Islam in fact doesn't just deal with the situations of our time, the needs of our time, the criteria, the, you know, the areas of inquiry of our time, but actually has solutions in these areas that haven't yet even been discovered. It has things to offer the world of psychology that the world of psychology has never known. They have never known. I'm a, I'm a basic level student of psychology. I can tell you Islamic psychology can revolutionize how psychology is studied. It can completely revolutionize it. Modern psychology studies begins with the assumption that human beings are flawed. That they have to be fixed. They're just flawed. I and mean, from Freud onwards, we're, we're messed up and we have to get unmessed up. So whether it's by means of pills or therapy, whether it's cognitive or you know, medical, clinical psych, you have to undo the mess that you are. Islam begins with the premise that you are flawless. Kullu mawludan yuladu alal fitra. You start with fitra. And then there were corruptions that came in. You have to, un if you can undo the corruptions, there's something good at the bottom. There's something pure. There's something great at the, at the essence of the human being. Is our approach going to be completely different as Muslim psychiatrists, psychologists? Yeah. It's going to be totally different. Islamic psychology says your whims, your desires, what you wish for, what you want. Allah put that in you, but you have to control it to, in order to achieve happiness. If you let your desires control you, you will be miserable in this dunya and in the akhirah. Modern psychology says do what, you, what feels good. Do what feels good. That's what they'll tell you. What makes you feel comfortable? That must be the judge of what is right for you. Because what is right for you is not what's right for me. Everybody has their own what's right for you based on what? Your whim, your personal desire. Does Islam have something else to offer? Even on the psychological side? Absolutely. And I'm not even, I'm not a PhD in psychology. I'm just basic level, bachelor's level psychology. But I'm telling you, we have a completely different worldview to offer. And it can really help people. <laughs> this deen came to help humanity, right? So we are going to be able to give the highest levels of education in Islam if we address the foundations. This is the few things that I wanted to share with you about the renaissance in Islam that inshallah ta'ala, I'm completely optimistic that it's coming. If, if we have the vision for it and we have the drive for it, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, we will achieve it. In our own lifetime, we will see a revolution in how Islam is understood all across the world and the ummah will be uplifted in its information, in its understanding, and in its application.